Welcome back to the special on the road edition of Five Rounds. Ram Dean and Black with you, and we are joined by Super Sage Norcutt, who will be in action at UFC 200. You made the near 2,000 mile trek from Texas here to uh, TriStar Academy in Montreal. Tell us why you decided that this is the place that you need to be to train. Yes, sir, I did. So it was like 2,000 miles. And uh, Coach Faraz Sahabi, he's awesome. You know, George St. Pierre, he's awesome. Roy McDonald, there's so many great guys here. So uh, coming up here is just, it's just a smart move. How do you feel that your, your game has changed since you first stepped foot in this academy? Oh, I think it's awesome. There's so much technique I can learn too. And I've already learned within just a week so far. So um, just learning every single day and improving myself, making myself better. Have you come up and done the Saturday uh, pro sparring before? Have you done the five hard, five minute rounds before? Uh, yes, sir. I came up here once for one week yeah. and I did that and uh, I had school at the time. So um, I had a lot more workload of classes and, and I had finals getting ready for so I had to fly back to Texas. But this time I'm up here for uh, a lot longer time, so I'm excited. And how do you enjoy coming up and doing this level of pro sparring? Do you feel a little stress in the 20 minutes before it? Or is it excitement to get in and, and, and play with these guys? Oh, definitely exciting, for sure. And uh, normally, normally I'm, I never spar, um, so this is definitely different for me. And, and uh, I'm taking it as everything's like learning. So getting to spar with such awesome guys here and everybody, it's just like um, my level of learning just keep going up. Let's just talk about uh, the experience. Uh, you've been in martial arts for a long time. The goal was to be a champion in martial arts. Now you're, you're taking it to a different level. Mixed martial arts maybe wasn't around for a lot of us. Now this is a sport that you've got your eye on. What do you need to do to find that same success that you had in karate in mixed martial arts? You know, kind of like you said, um, for karate, for instance, growing up as a little kid doing karate since age four, um, it's everything. Everything's learning experience. So you, you work at something, you're achieving your goal, and then in the future, you can be the champ. You can be the best guy in there. So uh, in the league that you're competing in. So here for the UFC, I believe it's kind of the same kind of thing. Um, for my weight class, for what I'm doing, uh, I have so much to learn still. I'm so, I'm so young and I uh, have so much time still. So just every little step of everything from if it's groundwork, if it's cage work, if it's stand up, karate, whatever it might be, there's always something to learn. When you're young and you're taking on something that usually people in their 20s and their 30s do, it could be a stressful kind of experience for a teenager to go in and fight men. Do you kind of recognize that stress and kind of accept it and think about it or do you kind of push it away? How do you deal with it? You know what? It's actually not stressful at all, which is which is pretty good. So, it's all very calm, and I think it I think it has to do with like growing up as a little kid competing and being in front of such large crowds, large people. So, it's kind of like the more people there are watching, it's kind of like it pumps you up for the fight or it pumps you up for the event that you're getting ready for, and and uh, you just have more excitement. It's more relaxed. Do you think you've learned anything new about yourself since this mixed martial arts journey? Absolutely. I think I think every single day you step inside. Uh, the gym, you're always learning something new about yourself. Something that maybe uh, you need to correct or something maybe that you've never experienced before. Are you imagining what you're capable of at 25 and 35, like how much better you, you can get? Do you picture that? Yes, sir. And I think, I think just, just having a birthday about a few weeks ago, so I just turned 20, I think um, I'm, I'm not even in my prime yet, so I still have so much time to grow. Um, I don't even think I've hit my full capacity for strength yet. I'm still growing, still gaining uh, muscle and weight and, and maturing. We've heard some of the greatest fighters in the world say they take more out of a loss than they do out of a victory. What did you learn from your loss? You know, I learned um, that I guess if I really am that sick, like I had a severe strep throat, having a wisdom tooth going, it was, it was like a, a perfect storm for disaster pretty much for that fight. Um, maybe next time the best thing could have been not to take the fight at the time. And, and I know I didn't want to let the UFC down, didn't want to let myself down, all the fans that are watching, but, but uh, sometimes what you need to do is what you need to do. I do a podcast uh, called The Mentality of Combat Sports with a sports psychology consultant. And he, when he works with his fighters, they look at the situation, either we're, we're going to accept that we're sick or something's wrong and we're not going to fight, or we're going to fight and we're going to fight despite it. Did you fight despite it? Did you entertain the idea of saying, tonight's not the night to fight? Well, you know, I thought I could win the fight even though I was so sick and uh, with everything I had. But um, having severe strep throat, I don't know if y'all have ever had strep throat. But um, having a relapse a few times over the few months, and then two days before the fight having a relapse, where well, the UFC takes me into the emergency room, it was like I could barely get out of bed the, the day of the fight, much less um, warm up. I couldn't warm up in the back. Getting in the octagon, it was, it was so fatigued, so tired. Yeah. I just really wasn't my normal self, and I don't like to make excuses, but um, I'm ready for the next fight. Yeah. How has your life changed since the, the, 
being in the UFC, all the hype, the spotlight, has your life changed? So definitely the social media, that's, that's definitely different. And I, I like it. So like Instagram, Twitter, um, all that Facebook, that's definitely different. So you, yeah. you get to engage with your fans. Like my Instagram, Super Sage Northcut. If uh, any fans want to go out there and see what I'm doing, like my training today or, or tomorrow or anything like that, Twitter's just Sage Northcut. And um, that, I think that's definitely different. You get to interact with your fans and it's more fun. I'm uh, in my mid 40s and I work in television and people go, that guy sucks. And as you get older, it becomes a normal thing. You just deal with it. It's part of society. Haters. But you're like 18, 19, 20, and this is happening. How do you deal with that? the reality that in 2016, somebody who just wants to be rude can just do that on social media? You know, there's always people that can say rude stuff or people that say good stuff. So it's kind of like if you have all the people that might be on this side or this side, I mean, you could choose what side you want to listen to. Why listen to all the negative stuff? We don't have to. Do you surround yourself with positive people always? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir, I do. And um, if you just look at the gym, for instance, TriStar Gym, everybody's very positive, uh, very smiley, and they're all like uplifting, so that's great. And who around here has kind of been a little extra helpful, like really made sure to make you feel comfortable and, and show you different things? Has there been anyone in particular? Not really anybody in particular, but I mean, Coach Faraz Sahabi, obviously. Yeah. George St. Pierre, he's one of the nicest guys you can yeah. meet. Yeah, uh, Roy McDonald. Olivier, there's, there's yeah. everybody. There's so many people you can list. Um, the list just keeps going on. When you envision uh, the action that's going to go down at UFC 200, obviously you get your arm raised. But there's, is there something that you would say, oh, I'd love to be able to do this. I've been working really diligently on this technique or this combination. I want to show it to, to the fans. Is there anything that you're hoping to show uh, at your upcoming fight? Yes, sir. So, I mean, I don't want to say any particular techniques sure. or anything, but there's obviously there's so much stuff that I'm able to do and uh, capable, I know that I'm capable of doing that I haven't shown yet, so I'm looking forward to it. When you get in there and you're in the middle of a fight, and you get, you, do you find that sense of freedom where you can do anything that you want? Have you had fights where you felt kind of a little bit binded up and it was hard to fight, and other fights where you just felt like you could do anything? Sure, I think that's a sport of MMA, so you go out there and practically anything's legal. I mean, you can't gouge someone's eyes out or hit them low, but <laughs> and like that kind of stuff, but it's, it's pretty much a sport. We get to go out there and uh, you can take him down at will if you want, or you can stand up and you can yeah. choose what you want. And I like that. Sage Northcott will be in action at UFC 200. He is one of the rising stars of mixed martial arts. We're going to take a quick timeout. When we come back, we're going to wrap things up here at the Fame TriStar Gym. Welcome back to this special on the road edition of Five Rounds. Ram Dean and Black with you. And of course, Saturday was all about the pro sparring. Elias Theodoro was here as he is getting ready for Sam Alvey in the nation's capital. Of course, Faraz Zahabi, Eamon Zahabi, some of the best fighters in the country, maybe in the world here. Anything that surprised you? Is there anybody that uh, kind of just like, wow, they're actually very, very good? Yeah, there's a lot of high level guys in here on high level sparring. I'm just in my element. I want to sit there and absorb everything that I'm seeing, little details as well as broad strokes. I'm a big fan of Zach Makovsky. Yeah, yeah. I really like the way that that guy moves. I like the way he puts the whole thing together, you know? And uh, I think he's one of the few guys who has the ability to put the complete game together to, uh, to challenge Demetrius Johnson. Can he beat him today? I don't know about that. But he still is growing and he has that ability. So it's fun to watch him do a few rounds. And uh, he's a very talented dude and he works really hard. He was cool. What I really liked about Makovsky is, is the mindset. He understands what he needs to do. Of course, you know, he looks back at those a couple of losses. Of course, didn't feel like he lost yeah. those fights, but it's like, okay, I can't focus on these things. I've got to get better. I've got to evolve as a fighter, taking new philosophies, adapting them to his game, incorporating them in his game, and he feels he's going to be a better fighter and feels that he'll eventually challenge for the title. Yeah, I agree with him. And, uh and watching him allowed me to see him do rounds with the, there's three, there's a number of great young fighters, but there's three that are coming up that are really guys to watch here. Mandel Nalo, yeah. Eamon Zahabi, Faraz, his brother, and Louis. Yeah. And uh, the three of them, seeing them each work with Zach and each other, it really got a, a real view on what the TriStar fighter looks like, because those guys have been built from the ground up here. So it's not like they come in with different skill sets or come in semi-complete and get changed. This is what a TriStar fighter looks like, and they're all different, but the way they're tied together is a real understanding of distance, a real real manipulation of distance and timing. And uh, though all three of those guys are going to be guys to watch at the highest levels. I had a chance to talk to one of the coaches, Eric O'Keefe, here, who's very, very high on Tom Breeze. 
Tom Breeze was not here. He was in uh, Las Vegas at the UFC Summit, but he said this is a guy that invests in himself. Instead of flying directly from Las Vegas to Montreal, he decided to make a stop in New York City to work with John Danaher. He said very reminiscent of George St. Pierre, where he would bring in the best training partners, the biggest coaches, the best coaches to aid him in his journey of being the best fighter in the world. He feels that Tom Breeze is one of uh, those individuals. It's just a great environment here, and the future is very bright for the TriStar Gym. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, the skill level here, the work ethic, they're really building a recipe that works. And the fact that it's been proven, George St. Pierre was the best fighter in the world. You know, and the, a young Sage Northcutt, it was fun watching him move too, you know, it was nice having him on the show and chatting with the kid. But watching him move, he's a super athlete, he's a stallion, you know, his, his heels never touch the ground. The way he floats through the air is very interesting to see. He's got a long way to go in skill development, but as far as his pure athleticism, watching him physically, violently express himself was pretty cool. And of course, he will be in action at UFC 200. We know all the eyes will be on the guy who just turned 20 years uh, of age, and we know he has a bright future as long as he stays grounded. And I have a feeling working with the team here at TriStar, he will stay grounded. Yeah, that will help. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a long way to go up. No matter how great the raw materials are, to go up and really achieve the highest things is just a long, non-stop staircase, but he's in the right place. That is it for us, another edition of five rounds in the books. We got to thank Faraz Sahabi and Sage Northcutt. Next week, all the follow for UFC on Fox, Rashad Evans and Glover Teixeira. For Robin Black, I'm John Ramdean. We'll catch you next time on Five Rounds.